In this video, John and I will be breaking down a massive opportunity in a recent IPO. But before doing that, a quick reminder that all the best tools for day trading will be linked down in the description. Don't forget to check that out. Let's get right in. You can see the price action from Thursday to Friday. It's 30 to 75. But my miss was the Thursday trade. For those who don't know, uh, this DXYZ is a new ETF uh, that just went public, say, three or four days prior. It's a really interesting ETF, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to end up being a fraud or not, but it's an ETF that came public that's uh, invested in, in private companies. Um, and Alex can can put the link below um, to the to the ETF so you can check out the prospectus. But 35% of the holdings is SpaceX. So I think it's become a kind of de facto play for people or, or memeified play for people um, for SpaceX. And if you look at the prospectus, it actually has a lot of really cool private companies in it. Uh, Discord, Plaid, Stripe. Uh, big companies, big tech companies that people have all heard of that are a lot of people are waiting to go IPO, but just haven't. So I think that this is moving so much because of that. I wasn't even aware of that ETF. I don't even think a lot. Of, maybe I'm just lost and I, I just haven't seen it. But I was I saw it a bit when I look at charts, but I didn't know it was an ETF. I thought it was just a, a recent IPO or something like that. Odd, like pretty uh pretty unusual type of ticker when i look at the it just destiny xyz tech it just i mean the day that it came public i you know i was chatting with a couple other people and it the website was way more ske sketchy than it is today um because they didn't have the prospectus they didn't have any of their sec filings on there no one could really figure out what the what the nav value was um and you know, you can see it kind of opened up at 10 ish It made a crazy move on halts because it's the first day of trading um, and, and kind of traded back down to 10. Uh, but if you look at if you look at this, th so that high of that candle, though, right there is, is 32, right? 32. Exactly. So, you know, you, you let it trade for a couple of days uh, and then my trade was on Thursday. Yep. So and, and then a pre market again on that Thursday. It goes up to the 32 area and it comes back down. Um, so I was watching it here in that 30 area, right? And there was a nice clean seller there at 30 and it was just getting tighter and tighter and tighter and bids are stepping up. Um, I was looking to buy through 30, thinking and knowing that 32 was the next kind of catalyst for clean air um, where more buyers might come in, anyone who, who would, who was short might look to cover and my order just sat there and it didn't fill. <laughs> and, and so I just, you know, I just, I just, I left it there thinking that I was, you know, risking a dollar. So I, you know, just because it was a little spreadier, I didn't really want to risk the candles. Um, so I was kind of incorporating the spreads and the whippiness watching it trade. So I was kind of thinking that I was sizing it so that I was risking a dollar um, because I wanted to hold it for that possible bigger move. Um, and I just, I just didn't get filled. Um, and then as you can see, you get a nice, it stops at 32, you get a really nice, uh, two minute pause and then you, and then you're off to the races for that next move to, to 38. On this candle, you wouldn't stop out. I mean, it probably happened no, so be, fast, just, right? just because, you know, and I was watching it and it, I was talking to some people who were able to get into that trade and there were. There were some bids at 30. Uh, I wouldn't have stopped out just because that's the flicker that we've talked that we that we've spoken about. Um, I used to always stop out, right? Oh my gosh, it's flickering down. I need to protect those unrealized gains because they're you know mine, right? And that's a very ego. That's all about ego, right? Not ego per se, like the, how most people would think of it but you're protecting your ego because you think that you have $2 of unrealized gains as it starts to flash down. You're like, Oh my gosh, what's going on? I need to protect those $2 of unrealized gains or a dollar or 50 cents at this point. Um, but now as we spoke about on a prior video, I like to keep it systematized, right? Just put my stop at break even, um, especially if I've sold some. So, you know, in this case, if I had it, I would have, Definitely sold a little bit into 32 
and then I just would have put the rest, the stop at the rest uh, at break even. Um, you know, get, that's the two R cell, put a stop at break even, and then see what happens. And I probably would have been swearing, right, if I if I was stopped out and that happened. But you know, more often than not, right, the stops hold. It ju it's just an emotional flicker to get people to make bad decisions, basically, right? It, it comes very, very, very close to your stop. So often, what I probably a mistake is when I see that it's so close to my stop, I just cancel my stop and I get out manually of the position. Yep. <laughs> Which... I, I, I'm telling you, I've, I've done the same thing so many times in my career where emotionally you think I just had $2 of unrealized gains. I want to lock in the last 25 cents, right? But at that mm -hmm. point, at that point, so even if you, you know, let's just use round numbers. So you had a hundred shares and you were $200 in the money. And now you're like, well, I could have sold for $200, but I didn't. And now I'm going to sell for $25 because I don't want to take a loss. Right. That's the mentality. Right. Sounds and dumb. then, but if, if, you know, and I, I really, I had a lot, like a long, hard conversation with looking at the mirror at myself, basically, like, what's the point of locking in $25 at that point? Why not just stop at a break even, right? Like what the $25 isn't going to make change my, the $25 or the 25 cent gain is not going to change my day or my week or my month. But, you know, and I'm acting emotionally because it was up $2, right? If I wanted to sell up $2, I would have done so, right? And that's, you know, it, we're just only thinking in the moment of what we're seeing and what we're reacting to when you're watching that those flickers um, on this on the level two, basically, right? And, and you, I basically had to remind myself and drive it home that if I wanted to sell up $2, I would have done so, right? But I was looking for more. Um, and that is what really helped me kind of ignore the little flickers down to 3050 or 3075 or 3025 or even 3001. But, you know, I've seen it where we've seen this happen, where the original stop holds and then it, and then it eventually makes that move higher, right? More often than not, it does. It's yeah, a, more often than not. And, 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 you know, just like anything, it's not, nothing's 100% certainty in the stock market, right? It's all just probabilities, but in what you see, but when you get these strong types of moves, they, they do tend to move, continue to move in your favor and the, and the stop does hold and whatever happens in the middle is just our own emotional, you know, doing our reaction to. By the way, if you're getting value from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I also did link all the best tools for day trading in the description. Don't forget to check that out. Let's get back in. Using a trailing stop, how would you, would you have trailed it with like a five minute or is there a way you would have exited that trade if you, you would have got that filled? And how, I mean, how, and how pissed were you that you missed that trade? I mean, I was angry. It was, I was just, it was just frustrating because uh, this was an entry where, you know, you could see a clear seller at 30 and watching the level two and watching the prints, you could see that it was getting taken. People were buying, people were buying it. And I pushed enter with plenty of time, you know, or what I thought was plenty of time where I should have been filled and I just wasn't. And I was just, I, I hesitated. Um, I hesitated for a second and I didn't push another buy button to try to get in because I, I wasn't sure if it was just gonna be a delayed fill, right? Um, I don't know if it was just the route I used, but it just, you know, I don't know. I was, I was kind of just shell, shell shocked. I was, I was kind of waiting. I was like, oh, is this gonna show up on my screen? <laughs> and and when it didn't, I was like, oh, that that sucks. <laughs> um, no, that feeling. Yeah, uh, so, but yeah, I, I probably would just would have, I would have trailed just on the way up. Um, you know, and this is one of those cases where I, I would have trailed on the way up or I would have tried to sell pieces on the way up. And then um, then instead of using candle trailing, just because it's, it's not as clear. Right. So the difference is, is that um, compared to like your ACB long from um, another video, uh, if you look at that 11 o'clock, five minute candle. Uh, yep. That one right there. Nope. There's a very big bottoming wick, right? So it comes close to that 32 breakout and then kind of closes at highs. And if you're watching this trade, you know, there were times when it had 50 to 60 cent spreads. So that's people just kind of hitting the spreads. Um, so 
I would probably try to sell on the way up, say, and try to space it out, knowing that I had a belief that this could run to 40, right? Or, or 50. And, and that's only just because of what I just mentioned, right? SpaceX, kind of the only way to play this, it's new, it has a lower float, um, and it has, it has names that people are, are interested in that are all private, like Discord, Plaid, Stripe, SpaceX, um, and uh, you know, amongst others. So my, my initial thinking was for this, this could go to 40. So I would try to sell on the way up and hold that last piece for, for 40 area. I, I, you know, and I, I probably would have sold that first spike to 40, that red candle, like, no, yeah, one more. Yeah. And when it doesn't touch 40, I would try, you know, I'd probably sell that last piece then. 